We just refinished all of our hardwood floors. However, to finish it off, we still need to add back our shoe molding. Let's get to it. So before we can get the shoe molding on the walls, we actually have to paint it. But along with painting the shoe molding, we have a few vents to paint. So we ordered a few new ones from Amazon, but we also saved a few others. So heading into our basement and storage, we can have our vents. We actually saved these when we did the demolition because we figured we'd need them and we're not sure if they sell these anywhere. So as you can see, there are, at least some of these are really dirty. So we're gonna have to clean these first before we can spray them. All right, and then for the other vents that we threw away, we had to get replacements on Amazon. Luckily, they're a pretty common piece. These are 18 inch wide baseboard vents. We bought six of them, three for this area and three for the bedrooms. Exciting. Yeah, so we got a fun new product for this video. We have our big paint sprayer from Graco, but sometimes it's too big for a project this small. So we decided to get the more smaller handheld one. This is a True Coat 360 variable speed. Uh, we'll link this and all the products that we use throughout this video down in the description. So. I'm excited for this spray gun because the other one is definitely intimidating. And then this one will be obviously for smaller projects but I think that I will also be using this one. Sweet, now we just got to read the directions to figure out how to use it and then we'll be ready to go. Wow. All right, so we are planning to spray all that shoe molding. However, we probably wanna spray it inside to not have any debris get on it while we're outside but we don't wanna get any paint on our newly refinished floors. So we're gonna be painting in our backyard, probably just in the grass, but we also don't wanna spray the grass. So we're gonna try and find a tarp in here to lay everything on. So we couldn't find any of the tarps. However, our grass is already pretty yellow. And so I'm not sure if it's gonna to make too big of a difference, but we will grab these two folding tables here. That way we can put all the trim up top and we'll be able to spray it a lot easier. All right, let's get the trim. We bought 21, <laughs> we bought 21 boards at 13 and a half feet each. And hopefully this is enough. We measured and we bought one or two extra. So we'll see how it works. See if we can get it outside. There we go. And the idea was to just spread all of these out across the two tables and then we'll be able to spray them. All we need to do is just spray the one side. We don't really care about the back or the bottom because it'll just be covered anyway. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, what, what temperature? It says it's 85 degrees right now. It feels like 100. I'm gonna put her inside. You're gonna get painted. Here. Wow. That works well. Are you nervous? Yeah. What's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> Not much. I'm surprised how well it coats it. So satisfying. We did all the vents on the tables. Now we're gonna do the shoe molding. Ah, gotta get this out. Since we did decide to spray outside, there obviously was gonna be some debris that got in the paint, but we were able to pick it out pretty easily. And this is all the paint left after that first coat and the sprayer worked really well. We were getting pretty good coverage, but we decided to turn all the shoe molding 90 degrees for the second coat to make sure we didn't miss a single spot. And this sprayer was such a huge time saver. As you can see, to do one coat, it maybe took 60 seconds. Whereas if we painted this by hand, maybe it would have taken an hour. And while we let that second and final coat dry, we're gonna jump back in time to when we first took off the old shoe molding. Before installing the new shoe molding, we had to make sure that we scraped off all of the old caulk, vacuumed it up, and then gave everything a good cleaning. Oh my god. Once 
everything was clean, we could start caulking. We specifically caulked the joint where the top of the baseboard met the wall. It's best to scrape out as much of the old caulk as you can before applying the new stuff, and make sure that your new stuff is also paintable. And these are the sorts of tedious tasks that no one really likes to do, however this makes such a huge difference. It did take us a while as we had to do 200 feet of it, but then we were able to let it dry and then give it a fresh coat of paint. And I'm pretty sure by now that the second coat of paint on all the new shoe molding and the vents is dry, so let's go ahead and start the install. Shoe molding is painted and we let it dry overnight. Next up are the vents. The reason we're doing the vents next is because the shoe molding butts up into it. And as you can see, the vent slides in like so. However, they don't actually fit right now because the new vents we bought are about a 16th of an inch too long. So to cut them to the right width, we're cutting the baseboard with an oscillating tool. On top of that, the holes on the back of the vent don't line up with any of our studs. We did try the holes that went directly into the floor, but that left a gap in the top of the vent. So instead, we're gonna create our own. So we're making sure to drill the new holes where the studs are, and luckily they mark where the studs are with some pencil lines. They're a little bit different for each vent, so we're marking them individually. I basically just line it up width-wise, and then I use this pen here to just roughly mark where the stud is. And it's an inch and a half wide, so you have a little bit of wiggle room. And I bring it over here. We have a metal cutting drill bit, so I just go about an inch down and then line it up with the mark and drill right through. As you can see, it's nice and tied up against that wall. And now, final piece. We then repeated this process for all of the vents and returns in all three bedrooms, the living room, and the dining room. Unfortunately, the new vents didn't come with any screws, and the screws from the old vents were pretty rusted out. So for now, we're just using some stand-ins, but we're going to eventually replace these with white-headed screws. Then once all the vents were finally installed, we could begin cutting our shoe molding. Rather than using a tape measure, we decided to lay each piece on the floor and mark it out with a pencil where we needed to make our cut, and we found this to be a lot more efficient and accurate. Anywhere where there was going to be an exposed edge of the shoe molding, we decided to make a chamfer cut at a 45 degree angle, and we thought this looked a lot sleeker. And rather than nailing each piece as we cut it, we decided to cut an entire room before nailing everything. And we were doing such a good job, we just had to get a high five, but we missed the first one. And as we were getting ready to start nailing, we fired up the air compressor, and Olive was a big fan. We're about to install some shoe molding in the living and dining, but before that, there are just a few exposed edges that have no primer or paint on them. So we're just taking our sample of Dover White and doing those few edges. I feel like that scene in Toy Story where he paints Andy at the bottom of the boot. It's pretty riveting stuff. Once all the shoe molding was painted, we could finally start nailing it in. So we're using the pin nailer, this is 23 gauge, and we're using three quarter inch screws so it pierces through the shoe molding and then just barely into the baseboard and we don't have to worry about hitting any electrical or water lines behind that. God, my feet are in here. Gotta blur them. The magic of editing. Gotta subscribe to our other channel to see my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link it in the description. Are you nervous? No. <laughs> are you? No. Don't break a nail on me. I quite like the pin nailer. I hate the regular nail gun. Like this is very satisfying to use. Okay, next screen is making me do this middle piece and I'm nervous because it's like a main thoroughfare and look how bowed it is. Olive's getting out of the way. <laughs> this is like how Kendall Jenner cut the cucumber. <laughs> I'm like sweating. Also, I was trying to hold in my sniffles the whole time. That's good. The viewer appreciates it. So we just cut a really long piece. Let's go see who fits. You want it to bow out a little bit. This is a little excessive. So we'll cut it just a hair shorter. Alright, second time is the charm. Isn't it third time's a charm? Maybe it is third time. Okay, third time is a charm. 
There we go. Approved? Is it good for me? Do you approve? Can I do it again? Once it was all nailed in place, the next step was more cock. Now you could fill all the nail holes with wood filler, but because we used a pin nailer and they were so small, we decided to just paint over them with some of that Dover white and they basically became invisible. The final step was touching up any areas of the baseboard that had some marring. Most of this was caused by the drum and edge sander from the previous episodes. And with that, we are finally done with these floors. Refinishing these hardwood floors has been a true labor of love. It took so much hard work and patience, but they came out better than we could have ever expected. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and also subscribe if you want to see us continue to renovate this house. We have so many more projects to come. This is only the beginning. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments as we'd be happy to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next time.